Hey guys. Um, yeah. This is, uh, Potato Cast, and, uh, on Potato Cast, I have traditionally used this as a platform to talk mostly about my personal life. I mean, sometimes it's just stuff that's going on that, you know, in the world or whatever that I have in my mind, but usually almost every episode, only like one exception, maybe two, was based on something personal, uh, even before I called it Potato Cast, when I just did an update video where I uh, just wanted to talk to you guys from from the heart and just talk about what's going on with me. And uh, because I thought it was funny, I put an image of a potato on the video. That's where it all came from. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think ahead of time about potato casts that I'd like to do, like the episode on depression was something that I thought about for a long time and thought was very important to talk about. The episode about how I feel like monetization killed YouTube in a sense, you know, not killed it, but killed its spirit. You know, that, uh, that, uh, that was something also that was on my mind for a long time. And I really just wanted to talk about, and, um, usually though, it's just something going on. It's an update and then it parlays into something that's on my mind. Like usually when I want to talk about something, it's because I, you know, something happened, you know, and, and, uh, like when I talked about depression, it was because I had just come out of a depressive episode that lasted several years. When I talked about YouTube, it was because I saw other YouTubers talking about the state of the platform. And I felt that they were, you know, not only wrong, but just so misguided in their base level thinking that I felt I had to set the record straight, but this is going to be a rough one for me. Um, I had in the back of my head that I might have to do this episode, but, um, it's, uh, something I've been dreading for a while and, uh, yeah. So I might as well just get down to it. I was not going to do this tonight. I was going to wait a couple of days actually. Uh, but then I was, I was just in the shower and I was thinking about it and I was thinking that this, um, this feeling that I have in my chest is not going to go away anytime soon, you know? And, um, it's a complicated feeling too. And I think talking it out with you guys is going to be not the first step, but one of the first steps along a road to some kind of recovery here. So it is, as I'm recording this right now, 10.30 p.m. Um, January 22nd, 2019. And uh, a little less than 24 hours ago, my dad died. Um, a lot of you guys already know about this. Um, I posted about it on both of my Facebook accounts. And I got a lot of replies and a lot of great reactions and messages and stuff. And I also talked about it on the Discord server where it was first announced by AJ last night. Uh, I should actually say early this morning because it was probably around 2 a.m. or so when AJ announced what happened. And we spent the majority of the day... I spent the majority of the day checking on and off Discord and uh, talking to people and dealing with a lot of different things. So my dad's gone. Um, that's rough, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of complicated feelings there. But what I want to talk about is I want to start from the beginning. I want to, you know, you guys know he had cancer. Most of you would know that. Maybe some people who have recently subscribed and don't know, you know, he had cancer. And I want to talk about that and the road leading up to this. So he was actually diagnosed with cancer um, over a year ago. It was, he was diagnosed on my birthday, uh, December 7th, 2017. And I didn't find out for a few days because 
at the time I was living on my own and I was employed and it was my birthday and the last thing that either he or my mother would want to do is should call me up and say hey your dad's got cancer um on my birthday you know so they waited for um it was about a week after when i had come by to visit and uh you know my mom told me she, she said that's sick and i said what kind of sick and she said cancer and i got the details then that um his liver had become enlarged to the point where he noticed the mass bulging in his uh, abdomen. And uh, for my dad to say that he needs to go to a doctor shows like a real sense of urgency because dad has spent so much of his life around doctors and hospitals that he doesn't like to go. This is a man who was upset with me and my sister because we called an ambulance on him to, to, to tend to him. This was years ago. It was about uh, 13 years ago now. Oh, well, like 12 and a half, actually. It was August of 2006, maybe September, somewhere around that. Late summer, early fall, we called an ambulance because he had collapsed and we didn't know what was going on. And then he kind of bounced back, and he was like, why would you call an ambulance? I'm fine. And It turned out he had a heart attack, you know? He's had a lot of brushes with death over his life. He lived for 70 years. He was born on uh, June 25th, 1948. So, Actually, just a, just a little over 70 and a half years, actually. And... Um, yeah, he he was in Vietnam, or I'm sure he was in danger, you know, often. He had hepatitis, he had a heart attack, he had a really bad case of pneumonia that was so bad because he let it go untreated for so long, and then uh, he had to have surgery to remove what's called a pleural peel, which is a really gross thing that I don't want to really get into with you guys, but... And uh, he's had car accidents, and... All kinds of things happened to him. A lot of near misses with my dad. I guess I should say near hit, not near miss. Um, you know, but uh, like I said, he also worked at a hospital for a really long time. Um, so I, I just think that, like, you know, after a while, like doctors and hospitals, and then when he had cancer, you know, he spent a lot of time, you know, in, 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 around, in and around doctors and hospitals. So, you know, he was diagnosed with cancer in his liver. There was a very large mass in there. And the good news at the time was that it was just one big, solid mass that was considered operable. And they scanned him to make sure that there was no cancer anywhere else in his body. And the reason that they do that is because they're not going to operate on his liver to remove the mass if he has cancer elsewhere. And um, the reasoning behind that is because a surgical procedure is usually traumatic to the body. And, uh, you know, if you have tumors in other parts of your body, it could, it could just really screw you up getting a surgery. So, um, you know, he had about a third of his liver removed. And it seemed like, I remember visiting him in the hospital at, Memorial Sloan Kettering in Manhattan like the day after his surgery and he was already like raring to come home he had to stay for another couple of days to recover but he was like already just like I want to go home you know and I said to him I said hey you don't have cancer now you know but little did we know that he still did and it, uh, he went back for follow up and uh, that follow up checkup and they scanned him and they found tumors in various parts of his body, and uh, uh, basically the way that they described it was that they were they were already there when he had his surgery, but they were so small, possibly even microscopic at the time that they couldn't be seen on a scan, and the the surgery 
basically caused him to uh, to have these. So, you know, and I believe I talked about this on Potato Cast that he had several tumors, but I never said um, where they were. You know, he had he had a few on his head, his jaw and the side of his head. Um, they were on his spine. They were in his lymph nodes. They were in his liver, believe it or not. Still, even after all that, they were in his liver, and they were in his blood vessels. And they were in his bones, his ribs, and uh, I believe other bones, and possibly his leg. So this was a serious situation that, you know, for the past year, I've been the voice of optimism in all this, you know. My mother would say things to me like, you know, I think I'm going to come home one day and just find him dead. And I said, no, that, you know, if he was terminal, the doctor would have told you that, don't you think? You know, we have to keep some positivity for his sake, you know. Um, I wound up moving back home because... Right after we found out that my dad had cancer, I lost my job at the doctor's office that I worked at. And, uh, you know, laid off right before Christmas. That was very classy of them. Just just real class acts, you know, to really just kick me when I was down. To, You know, because they were already stressing me out by just redefining everything that I did there and basically forcing me to do the job of people that have left and getting nothing extra, you know, in return, and also just treating me a lot worse than I had been treated previous to that. And then, you know, there was no compassion. There was no, you know, my dad has cancer. I'm having a rough time, and now you're letting me go. You know, that was rough on me, and uh, I lost the place that I lived in. I had to move out. And uh, my mom was like, well, you know, we want you to come home anyway because your dad's sick, and we don't know if this is going to be you know, we don't know how much longer he has, if he's going to survive this or not. So I came home, and uh, and it became very apparent that I was going to have to stay for uh, a while because of the dogs and because of my dad and, you know, everything else. And uh, especially now, with him gone, you know, my mom is older, somewhat disabled, and, uh, you know, needs a lot of help now, but... Uh, that's neither here nor there. Let me actually talk. Go back to the. Go back to my dad because that's the subject. So anyway, um. Yeah, I. Uh, sorry, guys. This is a tough one for me. I. Uh, you know. Watched this progress throughout the year of his treatment and everything, and always tried to be the positive one. First, he went on radiation, and on, it was unfortunate that the time that he was taking the radiation treatments was when it was in March when we had that horrible, horrible blizzard where the power was knocked out and we had to, it was so bad that we had to evacuate the house. You guys remember there was a potato cast on that too. And, uh, you had to evacuate the house and stay in a hotel for, I believe nearly a week. Like it was like five or six days. I don't remember exactly how long it was, but it was, it was very close to being, a full week and we were lucky enough to have found a hotel room that was actually close to where dad got his treatment but we weren't able to go back until you know power was restored and and it was somewhat safe in the area because there were trees down and everything and you know dad's going through this radiation that's you know it's like burning him and you know it's just it's, it didn't work even you know the they found that not only did it not shrink any tumors, and they had actually grown somewhat. So then the next step is chemotherapy. Now, there's a vision that people have of chemotherapy that you see in you know, popular media like movies and TV shows and whatnot, where you sit in a chair for like, you know, like an hour, an hour and a half, and they get an IV drip of poison into you. you know. These days it's a pill, you know, and you don't have to go to a certain place. You just get... You just get the pill. We were even delivered to the house and everything. And the pill, the, the chemo pill, uh, I don't know the name of the specific medication, but it was a form of chemotherapy. And, uh, yeah, that worked for a while. You know, the tumors are shrinking. The doctors are impressed with his progress. And this was going on for several months. He was regaining his strength. He was doing more things, you know. Um, 
it really seemed, you know, like he was making a recovery. He was even like being a bit more of a, of a pill than he had been. So that, that's how I knew that he was feeling better is that he was being a little on the annoying side. But, um, you know, I didn't begrudge him that because it meant he was feeling better, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, that worked for a while and then then it wasn't working as well and he was suffering some side effects mostly related to his liver function and I mentioned earlier that my dad had had hepatitis in the past and uh, you know the hepatitis was actually related to a needle stick injury of which he had several in his life we don't know whether it was when he was in the Marine Corps or when he worked at the hospital even though he was a plumber at the hospital the VA Medical Center in Brooklyn for a long, long time. He actually started out in the laundry, and this was in the 70s when they didn't, they weren't too careful about dirty needles being, you know, just in sheets and whatnot. So he had needle stick injuries from then. You know, there was a such thing as HIV then, but nobody knew what it was. You know, so there's a lot of people that wound up dying because of these kinds of situations. Luckily, my dad only got hepatitis, or he might have had it from the service, but, you know his hepatitis got worse and worse and worse until they came up with a, with a cure for it. And, and, uh, he under, he underwent that treatment and he was cured of hepatitis, but, um, you know, there was damage to his liver over time. And that's what probably led to him developing cancer in the liver. So anyway, um, yeah, um, he had to stop the chemo because of the damage that the chemo is doing to his liver and his health in general was starting to decline. So they put him on the next step, which was a process known as immunotherapy. And this is where he would go, and he would get this immunotherapy. And uh, basically the way it works is um, they, uh, they do something that basically tells your immune system to attack the cancer cells. So I don't know exactly how it works, but... Uh, that's what immunotherapy is, and you know this is right around when my uh, my uncle um, Joe died. Um, that was my grandmother's brother, and he died of cancer. And he had had the immunotherapy, and it actually made him worse. You know, so I didn't have the greatest feeling about this, you know, but um, you know we went with it because that was the doctor's plan. And uh, Memorial Sloan Kettings like the best, if not. This, the best, then perhaps like second best cancer center in the United States. And I felt like these people would know what they're doing better. And they, you know, they did warn that this, you know, immunotherapy kind of goes one way or the other. But, um, I felt like, you know, we had a, we had a pretty good shot. Um, so yeah, it, it, it didn't work. It, it made him worse. And he had side effects. It, it was fluid in his lungs and all kinds of crazy crap. The tumors are growing. They, they took him off of it. And this was, now we're getting to shortly before Christmas of last year, maybe it was around Thanksgiving when he was taken off of the immunotherapy. And the next step was, um, something called biologic something or other. I don't know. To me, it sounded like chemo is another pill, but he couldn't start taking it right away because of the damage the immunotherapy had done. And the immunotherapy had, put fluid in his lungs and done all sorts of things to him, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, so for, so, so this was in November, so for part of November on all of December and January, he had no treatment and it finally got ordered like last week and then it didn't come. And my dad was actually getting really kind of like depressed a little about the fact that he hadn't been on any kind of cancer treatment for for a while and that he was declining rapidly. And I saw it and my mom saw it. And, you know, um, we were just, you know, holding out. I, well, I, I can't speak for my mother, but I, I was holding out for this, this new pill to arrive and they were trying to expedite it with the insurance and all this other shit, but uh, and it, it never came. Um, and uh, to be honest with you guys, uh, even though I harbor a lot of anger about that, I'm not sure it, made a, it would have made a difference, to be honest. So this brings us to 
last night, or I should more technically say, well, it was last night, it was before midnight. Um, so my parents were in the living room watching TV, and they were down there pretty late, which is unusual. They usually, you know, go up to bed, and I thought, you know, Dad had been very weak recently. He hadn't really gotten off the couch that much. We had even eaten dinner in the living room, like normally we eat dinner in the, the dining room, but... Um, like, Dad had not really had the strength recently to get out of the the sofa and go to the table and everything, so he would be eating at, on the couch in the living room while we were in the dining room. It's not exactly far away. It's a matter of feet, you know, basically both part of the same big room. But, you know, we ate with him la- last night because we felt like, you know, he's been eating by his own. We should, you know, it, it was like steak sandwiches. We just, you know, we can just sit there and eat on the couch and walk in front of the TV or whatever with Dad. And um, he barely ate. He, like, took two bites of his sandwich, you know, and then I think later he had a little soup. And uh, he didn't have the energy to, um, to to go upstairs to go to bed, which that was a first. And my mom texted me and said, hey, we're, uh, we're going to stay down here and sleep in the living room. So, you know, she'll let you know if you need to take the dog out. You know, you should do that now, that kind of thing. So I'm just like, wow, that's 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 ominous, you know. But I was trying, like, trying to, like, all right, we really need this pill. We really need this pill. This has got to come soon, you know. And it was always like like a, like a day or two away, you know. And I was on Discord chatting up with you guys, you know, and everything was cool. And then I thought I was going to go to bed. Um, I was laying in bed. And uh, my mom calls out my name with the you know, a certain note of panic, and I knew, I knew it was bad, you know, so I knew something was happening with him, so I threw some clothes on, and I ran out there, and he was not responding, um, basically, and this is from what my mom told me, he was fine, well, not fine, but he was, you know, what he, he was the way he was, you know, and he had had a bottle of water in his hands, and he was handing it to my mom and then his eyes kind of bugged out and he just kind of just didn't move, you know, and, um, you know, uh, she called me because she knew instantly that something had happened, you know, and, um, it, it, to me, and keeping in mind that I am not a doctor, or a nurse or anything like that, but I I felt it looked like a seizure or possibly a stroke, and uh, I couldn't really get that much of a response out of him. I was calling his name, and he was moving his jaw, and it seemed to me that every time I called out to him that he would move a little bit. So I kept calling out to him, and I told, you know, obviously we were already called 911, called my sister, who came running over, running, driving over. Uh, she lives very, very short distance away, you know. And she came over, and we waited, and my mother was on the phone with uh, the 911 dispatch, and she was in a panic and freaking out, of course, and then eventually she handed the phone to me, um, because I can speak medical jargon better than her, and I, you know, I spoke to the dispatcher, and he st- stayed with me, and, uh, you know, we, he was breathing shallowly, but he was breathing, and, uh, we had a pulse, it was a very weak pulse, but I could feel a pulse, so, uh, local security force arrives, because anytime you call an ambulance, they, you know, the ambulance people call the local security force, and they get here first, so they got here, uh, and then, uh, you know, that guy even took my dad's pulse. And, you know, it was not a super good number. It was like 50-somewhat, but it was there. And uh, we were waiting for the ambulance, and it was taking a while because the roads were very icy. And uh, before they... Uh, sometime between you know, the call, and when they got here, he slipped away. He just, his heart just stopped beating. 
And I gotta tell you guys that uh, he died in my arms, which is not an experience that I wanted to have. It's uh, not at all experience. I've never seen anybody die before. And uh, the EMTs got there and they, they could not get a pulse. You know, and they had stethoscopes and they couldn't get a pulse. And it seemed that he, you know, he just, he wasn't there anymore. And, uh, anyway, uh, they asked my mother if she wanted them to perform CPR, which is not at all like what you think it is in the movies, you know? So if they start CPR, they essentially will not stop until they're told to stop by the next of kin, you know? So basically they would have continued to do it until my mother said, that's it. And uh, one of the two AMTs was really like, are you, are you sure he has stage four cancer? Is this really what he would want? Do you really want to us to try to resuscitate him, and my mother was freaking out, and I was freaking out, because he basically just died in my arms, and uh, um, the voice of reason was my sister. They were preparing to do CPR, and my, my mom went kind of away from it a little while. We, we needed to give them space, and they were preparing that, and they were calling in the fire par- department for backup, and my mother's like, they're not even going to do it. They're calling other people, and we're like, no, that's, you know, when they get too tired to continue, somebody else is the backup they do it they won't stop and my sister was like you really don't want to do this she said he's he's gone you know you really really don't want to do this so my mother asked them to stop and it was like one of the hardest things for her and for us as well for everybody and you know because we knew that he was gone at that moment we we knew my my sister knew i knew already you know we were, we were both in healthcare for a long time she tried to start him up he didn't respond I shone a flashlight in his eyes. I didn't, I didn't see any dilation, you know. You know, we, 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 we were still getting a weak pulse, but then we weren't, and, you know, yeah. So, it was a long thing. Um, at this point, it was like 2 a.m., and uh, then we had to wait for the coroner and the state police, and the coroner got there, you know, it took them about a half hour to get there, and then the state police arrived at about maybe another forty minutes after that. It took it took the state police quite a while to show up. And they, they took him out, and you know, to a funeral home. So his funeral is going to be on Sunday, which is uh, let's see the the twenty sixth. So. Uh, sometime at this point, I had messaged AJ, uh, and I said, hey, are you, are you around? And he said, yeah, because I figured he's always up late. And I said, look, I, I gotta tell you, man, um, my dad just died, and, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen, I don't know what's gonna, I don't know, you know, <laughs> I've never dealt with this before. I've dealt with death, but not like this in front of me like that, you know. And, uh, you know, AJ had just lost his mom not too long before this, and um, I hate to air this out, because I'm not, you know, well, I, I, he had announced it on his Discord, so I say my, my good friend Jesse, Armageddon time had lost his father not too long ago, so we're all just kind of in the same boat, you know, we're just three sad guys, you know, three sad, three sad snicky snicks, um, just, you know, who all lost a parent, you know, AJ, of course, had lost his father years ago, and that was mother, too, um, and it was all sudden, it was all like, you know, AJ just came home, his mom was just not responding, and then she died like a day later in the hospital, and uh, with Jesse, it was just he got a phone call recently, and his mom had just told him that his father had passed suddenly, you know, and then, and then this. So AJ went on my Discord, where I had basically just, just, just an two hours ago said goodnight to everybody, and everything was like really cool and whatnot, and just said, hey, you know... John's dad just died. You know, he might not be around totally. And uh, But actually, I wasn't around a lot today because, you know, uh, I had to be. You know, I, I had to 
keep my mind off of things. So, you know, I just want to say thank you to everybody that reached back at me, um, and who will on this video. But not only that, um, I had posted this on Facebook. A lot of you guys already knew this. And I'm going to actually go to my NecroVMX post, Facebook, and just shout out the people that responded to my public post on there about it. So, uh, let me just read you the post first, actually. This was nine hours ago. Here I wrote, It's with sadness that I must announce that my father has passed away after a year-long battle with cancer. He went peacefully at home, surrounded by his family, as he would have wanted. And uh, that was the big thing, because my mom was very upset. And, uh, and I'm sorry if my voice is cracking, because I've been using it a lot today. And I've been upset, obviously, but I've been using it. I've been talking basically all day, so I don't have much of a voice left. So, yeah, uh, uh, I'm going to largely be unavailable, but I still check Discord and thank everyone on there that has been usually supportive since I broke this news on there last night. My YouTube schedule will not be affected due to the fact that all of my videos are recorded and uploaded in advance. But social media posts may not happen regularly. I will also be taking a brief break from Twitch to tend to my family and to process this as having a family member die in my arms has been a shock to the system for me. I'm still processing this. I think I thank everybody that has supported me, is supporting me, and will support me in the future. I will return. I just need time to regroup and figure some shit out. And I still do. Um, I, I decided since then that I'm not going to stream anything. I, I, honestly, the next potato cast was honestly going to be telling you guys really good news that I became a Twitch affiliate. Um, so there's, you know, that for what it's worth, but, and I was going to be, you know, I, I'm like planning and streaming like just about every day and, you know, making this a real thing. And then this happens. So, um, I'm not going to take a lot of time off because I'm going to need to keep myself somewhat occupied in the downtime. So, you know, his funerals on Sunday, I'm sorry, did I say the 26th before it's actually the 27th? So sometime after that. Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, something like that. I will. I'll do a live stream just to see how it feels, to see if it feels right, you know. And I hope you guys show up and give me some love, you know. But I, I want to thank the people that already did. So looking at this, this is just. I just, just want to. I'm not going to read comments here. I'm just going to read names. These are the people that reached out to me on the NecroVMX Facebook. So, um. Uh, Mike Lomangino, who, well, actually, he didn't really reach out. He just tagged some other person. I don't know what that's all about. But um, Victor Valley, Tom Kane, Jeremy R. Rakakot, I'm sorry if I'm butchering any names, David James Montgomery. I actually talked to him quite a bit, and he's on the Discord. Dan Coleman, Dave Lascar, Jeremy Tyler Rosher, Rick Hutton, Alexander Leftwich, Jordan Alexander Anderson, Robert Hatfield, Mike Lamangino. Did I say that name already? Oh, yeah, that's the guy that tagged the other guy. He made two comments. Zachary Sharps. Uh, uh, those are the ones from the uh, the public comment. I also posted it on my own private wall where that's mostly family and friends and stuff like that, you know. So that's, that's different. I'm not going to name those people because it's like a lot of my family members and such. But anyway, I... Uh, yeah, it's uh, that's rough, you know. And I, like I said, the YouTube shit that's just not gonna change. Like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. These, these videos you're watching are fucking old. You know, Wario was recorded in August. Xenoblade was recorded in August and September and October. And did it bleed into November? No, actually, it didn't. The last video, the last one, two, three videos were all recorded on um, October 30th. So, you know, that was a long one, obviously. It's 163 parts. So, you know, as you can tell, uh, there's a lot of backlog, you know. So even if I took a, a very lengthy break from recording YouTube videos, there's still a lot of, uh, a lot of backlog. But, uh, and I might take a lengthy break, maybe of a couple of months from recording videos for YouTube, but um, in the meantime, I will be on Twitch. It's just not right away. Not until at least next Tuesday, maybe even further. It's it's. I'm, I'm planning either 
Tuesday and Wednesday just to see how it feels, see if I could just get on there and just do my thing and, uh, you know, it's going to be AM2R, that's what I was going to stream today, but that obviously it wasn't going to happen. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on, that's what's happened, and I'm really sorry if I was overly descriptive and graphic because I had to get this out. This has haunted me. I did not go to sleep. I laid in bed from about 4 a.m. till about 9.30 a.m. Not sleeping. Basically just replaying it all in my head over and over again. And uh, just seeing it, you know. I'm going to be seeing this for a while, you guys. This is... This is, I'm going to be honest with you, this is deeply traumatic. This is something that I'm going to carry with me for many years. And I know how it works, you know. I know that this is something that's just going to get better over time, where I'm not going to get over it, but I will learn to live with it. But it's going to take a while because, holy shit, well, you heard what I just told you, you know. Um, like I said, I've never actually seen a person die before much less a close family member in my arms. You know, that's just not something that I ever expected to actually experience. So, um, thanks for that, universe. Um, yeah, 2019's off to a great start. I, um, I, I will be on Discord from time to time. It's not going to be like it usually is where I'm kind of like on it, like constantly checking it all the time. But every once in a while I will pop on and talk to you guys. I will respond to messages. If you want to DM me on discord, feel free to do so. If I do not respond in a timely manner, please forgive me for that. I, even if I don't respond and I just send like an emoji or something in reply, just to show you that I read it and appreciate it. Um, you know, because it's like, there's only so many message of condolences you could read, you know, and a lot of them are the same thing, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying don't send condolences because I appreciate it greatly. I'm just saying that if I don't personally respond to everybody, I'm sorry. Um, or if I do respond to you, but it's like hours later or maybe a day later, it's because I'm going to be, I'm fucked up and I'm going to continue to be fucked up for quite some time. Um, so yeah, there's that. I uh, yeah, I, I I dreaded doing this this episode. I, I I knew that I would have to do something like this at some point, you know. Even if it was in the far flung future, you know what I mean. I knew that eventually I'm gonna have to do this video. I mean, I I did one my when my grandfather passed in 2011, you know. So you know, I I remember that. I took a took a little bit about a week off of YouTube then. Um, you know, I remember that, you know, uh, and how people were then, and I, and people are even better now, and uh, people have been really amazing, like I said, on Facebook, on Discord, um, one place I didn't post this on Twitter, and you know, somebody said to me, I believe it was Barrel, uh, Dr. Barrel said to me on, on on Discord, something like, you know, your, your, your life is just, it just sucks, you're like, everything bad happens to you, and I said, but you know what, I'm still here, motherfucker. You know, uh, yeah, I may have a rough life, but I'm still here. That's the way I kind of look at it. You know, I'm still here. You can't stop me. Um, I, um, you know, everybody's been really cool. And, uh, also some friends on Twitch that have reached out to me, uh, like, like T sparkle 99 and I kind of a new friend that I made, uh, not too long ago, bad beauty, bad with two D's on uh, Twitch. Uh, it's just this person I just randomly uh, raided, and she turned out to be a pretty cool person, and she was very kind to me. Um, and all the people that came on Discord and gave me messages, and the ones that sent me DMs, just just thank you so much. I mean, I haven't been... And, and the people who Facebooked me and everything. And it, like I said, I... I uh, it's It's been a rough time, you know? Um... But, uh, 
And it's going to continue to be so. Um, there's going to be some things that i got to kind of put on hold for now because of this recording. YouTube videos is one of them, but that's not a problem because I have so many. Um, Twitch, I'll probably take a shorter break from Twitch, but I do want to get back into it. Um, another thing that... Uh, the, the screenplay that I'm writing, the, the Sanctus Mortem... I mean, I'm still going to work on it, obviously, but I'm just taking... I'm, uh, anything because our studio is related, I'm taking a little bit of break from my talk to Tanya and Peyton about that already. Uh, Peyton actually called me. He was very concerned with everything. But um, another thing uh, is List Critics 2 for January. We're, we're not going to get to do it. I, uh, You know, me and Peyton, we're going to... Sorry, I'm answering people on Discord right now. Um, we're not going to get to do it. I mean, I, me and Peyton, we're going to do it like pretty soon actually, but I'm not in the mood, so we're not going to do it. I don't want to do List Critics 2 right now. I don't, I don't want to think about that. I, th that's a show where I kind of have to be on my A game, you know? Um, the movie review feature for February. I'm still planning on doing that. It's not like completely finished it. But it's it it's not completely finished. But it's it's at the point where I feel like I can do it, like and start it, and that by the time I get to the point where I run out of videos, I will have made more. If that makes sense. So yeah, I'm just gonna end it right here. There was no intro. There was no reading of comments, I'll get to that at some point. I just, just been talking about this for 42 minutes and I feel like I'm going to go insane, you know? And, and oh, and the reason that I brought up the whole thing with Barrel earlier before about, you know, like, you know, him saying like, wow, you know, shitty things just keep happening to you. It really just blows. And I said, you know what though? I, the one thing that I feel like will kill me is having to post this shit on Twitter. So I'm not going to, I fucking hate Twitter so much. And that feeling has not dissipated recently. It's 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 amplified. If anything, Twitter is garbage. Maybe I'll do a uh, potato cast about that one day. Um, see you guys. <laughs>